to the Holy Gospel, a chapter from the Holy Gospel, according to our teacher, St. Mark the Evangelist, may his blessing be with us David the prophet and king, may his holy blessings be with us all, all, amen. The heavens are yours, the earth is also yours, the world in all its fullness, you have found them. The north and the south, you have created them, so boy and Herman rejoice in your name. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, to whom is glory forever. Amen. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when these things will be, and what will be the sign when all these things will be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and will deceive many. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled, for such things must happen, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be earthquakes in various places, and there will be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows, but watch out for yourselves. For they will deliver you up to the councils, and you will be beaten in the synagogues. And you will be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all the nations. But when they arrest you and deliver you up, do not worry beforehand or premediate what you will speak. But whatever is given you in that hour, speak that. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. Now brother will betray brother to death, and the father he is child. And children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all men for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end who shall be saved. But when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let him who is in the house stops not go down into the house, nor enter into anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back up to his garment. But word to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babes in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter. For in those days there will be tribulation, such as has not been from the beginning of creation, which God has created until this time, nor ever shall be. And unless the Lord has shortened those days, no flesh will be saved. But for the elect's sake whom he chose, he shortened the days. Then if anyone says to you, 
Look, he is the Christ, or oh, look, here there is. Do not believe, for false Christs and false prophets will arise and show signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. But take heed, see, I have told you all things beforehand. But in those days after tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars of heaven will fall and the powers in heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds, from the farthest parts of the earth to the farthest parts of heaven. Now learn this parable from the fig tree, when its branch has already become tender, and pull forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that it is near at the very doors. As surely I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my, but my words will by no means pass away. But of that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. It is like a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each his work, and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Watch therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, in the evening at midnight, at the crowning of the rooster in the morning. Lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping, and what I say to you, I say to all, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. We wish you a happy Father's Day to all the fathers, the grandfathers, the father figures and the spiritual fathers that do so much for us. And it's a time to ring our fathers and tell them that we love them. And if anyone has any quarrel or any argument with his father, today is the day to resolve it. Today is the day to resolve it. For today is the day of salvation. And it's also a special day today because we commemorate the um, the, the fathers of fathers, the patriarchs of the church, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So let's look into their lives and see if we can take um, some blessings or some lessons from the life of the patriarch for our fathers today, since it's a special day for Father's Day. First, Abraham. Abraham lived a life of obedience to God. His father was an idol worshiper, and God appeared to Abraham and said, Come with me, and I'll tell you a place where I'll go, where you should go. Now, Abraham doesn't know God, yet, and his father is an idol worshiper. He doesn't even know who this God is, but he accepted, and he started this life of obedience and faith. And not only him, he took his whole family and his household and his nephew and everything they owned, so everything they owned and went with, uh, with God to a place where they don't even know. That was the beginning of the life of faith of Abraham, the beginning of the life of faith. And for us as an application, faith is the most important gift you can give to your children. What are we transferring to our children at home? Are we transferring um, love, hope, prayers, are we giving them, are we teaching them about the saints, about St. Mary? Are we teaching them about the beautiful saints of our church and all the, all the feasts of the church? Or are we transferring other things to them, um, like fighting at home? If, do we fight with our husbands, fight with their wives, or swearing, or gossiping, or the lack of faith? What are we transferring to our children at home? Transfer, transfer to them the life of faith. Because the life of faith is the most important gift you can give to someone. It's not money. It's not um, grand houses. It's not cars. It's
It's not private schooling. It's nothing other than faith is the most important thing. So when they go into the world, they're strong and have the tools of faith to conquer. And what about Isaac? He lived a life of sacrifice. As we know, he took the wood on his shoulders and went to be sacrificed. And a lot of times we speak about Abraham um, with the life of faith and we say, well, Abraham was ready to sacrifice his son. But sometimes do we consider Isaac? Isaac also was aware of what was going to happen. And it may have been worse for Isaac because Abraham knew that God had promised that through Isaac all the nations would be blessed and his children would be like the stars of heaven. So Abraham thought that even if Isaac was slaughtered, God will resurrect him. That was his faith. But Isaac, did he know that? Did Isaac know? Did Abraham share it with him? When Isaac was on that altar about to be slaughtered, I would say he accepted his faith. He accepted that this was the sacrifice God wants. He lived that life of sacrifice. So it would have been difficult for Isaac to accept, but he did accept it. He lived that life of sacrifice. And likewise, the father of the family is considered the priest of the family, is considered the leader of the family, not a leader to break anybody, but a leader to serve his wife and his children, the priest of the family. So the, the, the father should sacrifice for his wife and his children. To sacrifice what? Even simple things. On Sunday morning, it might be your only morning to sleep in, but your children are at home and they want to come to church. Or even if they don't want to come to church, we push them to come to church so they can get the life of faith that we just talked about. Come with us. Come with us so when you're older, you may learn how to love and to live with Christ. Okay? Or does the father give time to the children at home? Or is he stuck on his phone scrolling? Does the father give quality time to his children? Or is he stuck in his work saying, I need to get more money to build, to build, to build, and to provide for my family so much? But does he give time to his family? The father is expected to be like Christ and how his relationship was with the church. Christ came and died for his, for his bride, the church. The father is expected to sacrifice to that point everything, to sacrifice his time, to sacrifice everything on earth, and I'd say even to the point of death. Should there be physical death and he can protect his family, then he should go first because he's the leader of the family and he's the priest of the family and he's the one that sacrifices to the family. So the life of sacrifice. And what about Jacob, the troubled Jacob who did so many mistakes? His his beauty was that he struggled with God. Even when God, when he fought with God, God changed his name to Israel. When he was going to see his brother Esau, he was scared because of all the trouble that he caused for Esau. And he ran away for decades and decades. And he's coming to see his brother for the first time, Esau. And he was frightened that it was going to kill him and his children and everyone. So just before it happened, the night before, he was walking and he saw a man who was an angel with a capital A. We believe it is Christ before his incarnation. Christ came to earth before his incarnation to, as an angel to, to uh, fight with Jacob. And Jacob fought with God. He fought with God. And God said to him, let me alone. Leave me alone. It's, the day breaks and I want to go. And he said, no. And he grabbed him. He said, I won't leave you until you bless me. I won't leave you until you, until you bless me. Is this the struggle we offer unto God? I won't leave you unless you bless me. I won't leave you until you do these things. And there's a father on his knees begging for God to bless his children, begging for God to give him the life of faith, begging for God to, to deliver him from any tribulations and sorrows. It's important. Earlier this week, uh, a mother came to me, uh, like uh, outside of the church, and she, she said, um, um, I'm, I'm Catholic and I, I love God and I go to church and I love, um, I love my Christian faith. 
But my husband's complete opposite. He, he doesn't like the church at all. He doesn't come to anything. And she said to me, yeah, do you mind me asking you what shall I do? And I said to her, look, um, St. Paul had this issue in the first church, right? When one of the family members converted, say the father or the mother converted, um, or the husband and wife converted, the other one still didn't convert. So what did St. Paul say? He said, by your good works, by your good deeds, by you showing a life of faith, then the other person might be convinced and the other person will come to Christ. So I said to her, you love Christ, you go to church, you live a life of faith and your husband will come. And I said also, it was a few days after the, the feast of St. Augustine, and I said, you know St. Augustine, he's from your church, the Catholic church. And I said, you know him and you know what his mother, St. Monica, did. She prayed for 20 years for the return of her son because he lived a life far from God. And she cried and she wept and she prayed for 20 years and she went to the Bishop of Milan and prayed and asked him to pray and he said to her, because of your tears, your son will come back. And I said, because of your tears, your husband will come back if you pray for him. I think she looked a bit shocked because she wasn't prepared to pray for 20 years. Well, maybe she was, but she, was st she, she looked a bit shocked to me. Maybe the request for 20 years of prayer and struggle was, was a bit much. But this is what we know. This is what we know, right? This is the life of faith. This is the life of prayer. This is the life of struggle. It is only God who will open the hearts. So let's pray for faith. Let's pray for the life of struggle. Let's pray for the life of sacrifice. Why? Why is it important? Because you heard the gospel. It's one of those scary gospels. It's one of those gospels about the end of time. And it's about the second coming. And what's going to happen in the world. What we read wouldn't you say that most of it has already happened? Nation will rise against nation. Children will rise against their parents. And all the, the, the bad things that the Lord put before us, most of it has already happened. And more will happen. And there will be more darkness. So we have our children who will, who will go to the next generation without us. And they will stand before the people in their workforce. And they will have children themselves. And if we haven't put in them the life of faith, the life of sacrifice and the life of struggle between them and God, then we've left them defenseless. We've left them without tools. We've left them naked in faith. And they won't know what to do. But the one who is strong in faith, the one who's been born into the church that, that comes every week, more than once a week, comes and attends the youth meeting, the Bible studies, the Sunday school, the liturgies, the nahatas and all that, becomes strong in faith. The children will learn. Just bring them to church and they will learn. Teach them faith. Pray at home with them. Read your Bible. Have, let them fast as they go. Teach them the life of fasting. Don't forget the Wednesday and Friday fasts and all the fasts of the church. If they're small, get them to do small fasting. You know, get them to be trained in that. And so they can grow in the church. So when the time comes, when they go into the world, you say, I've done what I can. They're in God's hands and they're strong in the faith and they know God. They have a relationship with him in their hearts and they have a defense against the world that is crumbling around us. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Oh,